Okay, you guys, coming back at you with another video. This is guitar reveal number three. Excuse the dirty case, it's old. It came with the guitar when I bought it. Anyway, uh, when you uh, see this case, you don't know what's in there. That last one was pretty obvious. There's only one guitar shaped like that last case. But uh, this one, there could be anything in here. There could be a Les Paul in there. There could be a ES-335 in there. You know what I mean? So, you know, enough talking. Let's just let's just open and see, see what we got, right? Okay, you ready? Three, two, one. Ooh. Look at that thing right there. Beautiful. So, quick backstory and as to how I got this guitar. Um, so as I said in my previous video, guitar reveal number one, um, obviously you know, one of my favorite guitar players of all time is Jimi Hendrix. And when I first learned or was going to learn how to play guitar and was going to buy one, I was going to buy a Strat because, well, you know, for obvious reasons. And when I went in the store, I was just so hell bent on buying a Strat without ever, uh, without ever having played one, excuse me. And I thought, like, I'm just going to pick it up, whatever. But the guy in the store, his name was Ed, he told me, you know, try another guitar before you just buy that one. Because you never know what might feel better in your hand. So, I walk over there, I pick up a Strat, because I wanted a whammy bar. Because I wanted to do dive bombs like Jimi Hendrix did. Um, my favorite all-time band, or my all-time favorite band, excuse me, let me get it right, is Kiss, right? And they don't use whammy bars in their music. They barely use effects pedals. And um, I know you could say, well, yeah, they did. Like when Mark St. John, Bruce Kulick was in the band, like in the 90s without the makeup. I mean, the late 80s, early 90s without the makeup and, you know, that kind of stuff. They were using whammy bars. And yeah, OK. But for the most part, the straightforward Kiss Classics, Ace Freely, uh, Vinny Vincent and Tommy Thayer. When they are the lead guitar players, there really is no whammy bar things happening. So Hendrix was my first exposure to being able to play around with that and make your guitar do different things. So anyway, I pick up a Stratocaster and that particular Strat um, had this glossy finish on the neck. And I always try to go for maple neck and it had this glossy finish and I couldn't slide my hand. Like when I tried to slide my hand, it was like like that like there was resistance on my hand and um i couldn't figure out what that was about but right next to it was a telecaster check out guitar review number one uh i'm gonna put the um the link in the top corner here for that one that telecaster when i picked it up the neck was so smooth i was like oh this is the one this is the one i didn't even try another guitar i said this is the one and then uh, my mom was like, what kind of guitar is this? I was like, remember that butterscotch guitar Prince had on his back when he rode up on the bike in Purple Rain? This is a Telecaster. Bought that Telecaster and that was history. But as you know, Telecasters don't have whammy bars. They're the sister to the Stratocaster, but they don't have um, whammy bars. And you could get uh, like a, a Bigsby bar put on there. And I, you know, you could, but it's not, it's not really the same. Um, and then the Flying V came, check that one out. I'll put that link at this part of the video. Um, and you know, the Jackson Flying V I have does not have a whammy bar. I know there are some that do, but the one I have does not. And, um, and when I always inquired about getting one, it was, you know, they were talking about like doing stuff that could potentially break my guitar and no, 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 no. That Flying V means so much to me if you check that previous video, but um, so let's get into this. So I wanted a guitar with a whammy bar or something close to it. And I never really, uh, liked the SG. I thought it like, looked like devil horns to me, but then I started thinking about, I like Tony Iommi, you know what I mean? Um, you know, a sprinkle of Eric Clapton. Um, you know, just trying to think of, uh, some, some nice SG player, of course, Angus Young, you know what I mean? And so I start thinking about the, um, the SG and I started to see some of them had these these bars on them that looked like whammy bars but I didn't really know what they were 
And I just didn't want to buy a Strat. I just, I don't know. I didn't want to buy a Strat unless I could buy it and do it like Stevie Ray where the whammy bar is on the top. Because I wanted it on the top instead of the bottom if I was going to get a Strat. Couldn't make that happen. So I hit up Ed, the same guy who sold me the Telecaster and the Flying V. And uh, if you're ever in Columbia, Missouri, look him up. His name is Ed Stanley. And um, um, so I asked him. Could he get me an SG with a bar on it, a replica uh, of Hendrix's, like the one that Jimi Hendrix had? And I know um, right now there are probably some people saying, Jimi Hendrix never had an SG. He was a a Fender player. Well, um, you know, I I came prepared. Boom. There it is. Second appearance on the Dick Cavett show, he played this, and he had the full band with him on the second show. Uh, Juma Sultan, Jerry Velez, Mitch Mitchell, Billy Cox. Uh, I can't remember if Larry Lee was there or not. But uh, it was the Gypsy Sun and Rainbows lineup from Woodstock, and they played uh, Isabella and... um, I can't think of the other song they played, but uh, they played two songs uh, that second time he was there. The first time, he just played Hear My Train and Coming with the house band. Um, Anyway... um, Back to my guitar here. As you can tell, this is damn near an exact replica. And this and this is old. This thing is old. That's why it looks, you know, like the this at one point was alpine white. But because it's so old, it's changed into this cream color. It looks more yellow when you see it without the light on it, but it's like a cream color because time and um it's got the gold hardware, right? Um, so check this out, you know, so, and it says Les Paul custom, so it doesn't actually, it's, it, you know, it's not actually an SG, it says Les Paul custom. So we got the pick guard here. I never understood why it says rhythm and treble, um, for your pickup selector on Gibson guitars. But, uh, with this one being the fact it has three humbuckers, uh, down is middle and bottom mid is all three. And rhythm turns on the middle and the top one here. And then these two work volume and tone for this, these two pickups together. And then these two work the back one. So, you got your input jack right there, you know. And uh, right now, I think I think it's tuned into flat. I think it's tuned to E flat or something like that. Maybe all the way down to D, I don't know. But it's got the gold humbuckers, as you see. Turn up the ebony neck right and then look it says les paul custom epiphone you know which is beautiful now the reason jimmy's didn't say epiphone is because well you know epiphone uh wasn't a thing yet now i paid a pretty penny for this too like don't don't get it twisted like this this guitar was not some 200 hundred dollar guitar that you just picked up and uh you know the gold uh pickups it was actually custom ordered all the way from um california i believe is what ed said and uh, so check this out. So uh, I got my glass slide, right? Take this thing out. You see? Yeah. It's painted that way all the way around. Beautiful, beautiful. So check this out, though. Um, and then, then of course, you know, we got the, the bar. I'll just give you a little demonstration of that. So, yeah, it's definitely in flat or all the way to D, I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. And then, cool, check this out. Check this out. You, see, you can pull it this way and push it down. check that out right that's what jimmy hendrix used to do right for sure um something else that i have in here give me one second here is i found this strap in the store and i just thought it was super cool it had to come with me this um you know it's a nice little strap it's real leather though because when you're playing and you're sweating it, it does stick to you um, and, and something else I wanted to share real quick, another guitar, like legend, pioneer, great, that doesn't get his respect, 
um, other than Billy Gibbons, is the one and only, the purple one, Prince, right? Um, there's so many songs where he just got cool sounds like Cream, and then there's songs where he just went off like um, the solos on Let's Go Crazy, you know, that's him, obviously, and that's no disrespect to Wendy, or the solo on Purple Rain, that little run, ooh, man, let me tell you, Prince, to me, is the only guitar player that's come the closest to Jimi Hendrix as being just a perfectionist. Now, my favorite guitar players, if I had to like lay out five for you, um, the list changes all the time. But my my two that are for sure is Ace Frehley, Jimi Hendrix, right? Prince. Those are my three. Um, and then, uh, th that's just favorite though. Not who I think is the best. And then I have CC DeVille on there, of course. Um, and, uh, I, it depends on how I'm feeling for that last one. Cause I might give you Billy Gibbons. You know what I mean? I might say Ed King, you know what I mean? It, it just, it, it varies for me. Um, but for me, Prince, when I started taking him seriously and started realizing like, yo, this dude is phenomenal. And he could play bass and drums. And that first Prince album that he did uh, called For You, he played 19 different instruments. You know what I mean? Or 21 different instruments. I think he was 19 years old when he cut it. Like, ridiculous. And um, it came out 1979, I think. 78 or 79. And um, so go back and check that out. All the layering, the multi-tracks, the bass lines, the drums, the keyboards, the clavinets, all that stuff. Prince Rogers Nelson. Um Anyway, uh, and if you don't believe me that Prince is a kick-ass guitar player, watch him perform at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and he shut it down. And it was unrehearsed. And at the end, you know, he takes the guitar off and throws it up in the air. I ain't got to say anything else. So, um, he doesn't get his proper respect in the world of guitar that I think he deserves. And so, I... Uh, have this little heirloom check this out so um when i was in high school there was a, a teacher who ran a radio station and uh his name was uh, uh or his name is phil overing and great man um I, I wouldn't know some of the stuff that i know about music if it wasn't for talking to this man for for hours and i remember almost everybody who came to like work at the radio station like he almost gave them like a quiz or something and i remember he's talking to me about Jimi hendrix and he, he's he's heating up some food because it was our lunch break and stuff at school his lunch was like at the same time but we would go to the radio station and he asked me three questions and i can't remember what the uh first two questions were off rip you know i mean i think they're simple questions they were simple questions for sure that a hendrix fan would know though and, um, but the third question, he kind of threw me like a little fastball or what, what he thought was a fastball. He said on Jimmy's third album, uh, on the experience's third album called Electric Ladyland, there's a song on there. Um, it's a cover. And before he finished his sentence, I already knew because there's only two covers on that album. And, uh, he said, there's a cover on there called Come On. Uh, who is that song? Before he could finish the sentence, I said, Earl King and the look on his face just was in, in surprise but also like yes <laughs> and um so excuse me phone rang um so anyway he and his wife uh traveled to Paisley Park I want to say it's like 2017 so like a year after Prince died and he brought me these back these are Paisley Park uh embroidered uh and designed guitar picks they feel like they're on the medium side of things uh i've never opened them i never will open them um or or use them and i do alternate between different um guitar picks i, I use personally i like to use uh heavy uh heavy guitar picks is is my preference um, and I really started with like a Fender, like, I don't know, like medium or something. And then I bought the Dunlop one with the Gator on it. And it was like a 1.0. And because I play bass and when I 
would play Kiss, Gene Simmons uses a pick. I would need a heavier pick to pick the strings for me because sometimes I would drop them because the string wasn't heavy. The string was heavier than the pick was. The, the, uh, the pick would break, whatever. And so I bought those Dunlop ones. Uh, I have a green one that says 1.0. And then I was like, do they make them heavier than this? And I found these, the Dunlop 2.0. When I found those, I made the switch. And uh, so I use this particular uh, type of guitar pick every time I'm playing except if I'm playing funk if we're playing James Brown chic anything anything that's Nile Rodgers uh or or Curtis Mayfield um something in that vein if I'm not strumming with my fingers like Curtis Mayfield then I'm using a very very light pick I mean super flimsy uh, because the brush against the strings, it's it's like like a paintbrush. It's so smooth that um, when you have a heavy pick trying to play lightly like that, it uh, it kind of like digs into the string. Like see that? See how it's kind of like digging into the string a little bit more than you would want it to. When you have a light pick, it just like it, you know it's barely touching it. So this right here might be one of my favorite guitars um that i have in my collection i wouldn't say it's the most played because it's still the telecaster but um you know uh who are some of your favorite uh sg players you know uh is it eric clapton is it angus young is it tony iomi uh, is it Jimi hendrix like what do you think uh let me know down in the comments and i think Next week, we'll conclude my guitar reveals, and then I'll have some other memorabilia and stuff to show you guys. So, um, just like, share, uh, comment, you know, uh, subscribe down below. Um, I appreciate it. Um, and uh, we over and we out of here. Take it easy.